out long ago through his very veins, his very veins, his very blood. But now, now he's opening up the mysteries. He's opening up the mysteries. He's opening up the mysteries to his sons and his daughters. His sons and his daughters. Come on. He's revealing his heart. is now the time is now the hours now the seasons now no it's not for later he's pouring out revelation from revelation yeah. Yeah. he's pouring out revelation from his very throne jesus lord pour it out lord we cry lord pour it out lord we're hungry for more yes. lord we're hungry, hungry. Your glory, Lord. Pour out your glory, pour out your glory. Give us eyes to see, Lord. Give us eyes to see, Lord. Give us eyes to see, Lord. Increase, Lord, our eyes, Lord, that we could see past, past, Lord, the natural, Lord. We want revelation, revelation flowing through our very eyes, oh God. Revelation to hear, Lord, hear your voice, hear your voice, hear your voice. Yield, we want to yield to your voice, Lord. No longer, Lord, no longer a bride being tossed to and fro. No longer, no longer a bride, dirty and towered, tattered. No longer a bride. Revelation from revelation from the very throne of God. Revelation. He spoke that to me in the parking lot. Jesus. Two weeks ago when we were praying out there for this conference. He said, I'm pouring out revelation from revelation. From the very throne of heaven, he's pouring out his revelation. Jesus. And you'll never be the same. Jesus. Never be the same. He's propelling Jesus. some of you right into your destiny, even this weekend. Father, we just say, come. May your kingdom come and your will be done, oh God. Lord, we just say, just like Mary, be it unto me yeah, according Jesus. to your will, oh God. Jesus. Just give me the keyboard and just hold two chords. I want a couple prophetic words to be released right now before we go any further. I feel like we're just in that place where it's time to release. Just stay where you're at. the Lord say that revelation is coming from heaven, that heaven is open, and that those have an ear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. For there is a day coming where revelation that brings truth will enlarge, says the Lord. For there is an enlargement of vision in this house. There's an enlargement of vision in those who will hear and listen to what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. For the Lord says that when revelation comes, truth comes. And with truth comes, there is freedom. And with freedom, there is enlargement. And with enlargement, there is occupation. For the Lord says, I drop revelation in the house, that the house may occupy the land that I have given them. 
And even in this day, the Lord says that I am expanding vision. I am expanding this house. I am enlarging you, says the Lord. For if you will hear and listen, revelation will come and it will bring a transformation in you that will enlarge you. For the Lord says that my kingdom is constantly moving and enlarging. It is growing and it is my desire, says the Lord, to enlarge and expand you. For the Lord says that even as I declared and said light, I declare tonight that I am releasing the children of light in this hour that they may go and extend my borders, says the Lord. For even as the speed of light is expanding in this hour, so the Lord says even you will expand at the same speed. For the Lord says that I accelerate even tonight. I accelerate by revelation the truth of the kingdom of God. For the Lord says that even tonight I pour out in this place my glory and my light. For the Lord says that where there is light, there is no darkness. And the Lord says that I expand now the light of the kingdom of God. And you too will expand, says the Lord your God, because I declare tonight that the sons and daughters of God who are full of the light of my glory and of my kingdom will enlarge and expand, says the Lord your God. For tonight I declare that the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the lame will walk, and I declare that this is the acceptable year of the Lord. Lord says there is a territory to be taken and I'm even laying before you this weekend the vision of your own personal territory for even as you have subjected yourself to realms of the spirit in this past season this next season as the territory is clearly laid out before you I'm requiring my people to walk in a level of obedience that they have not in times gone past and the hour is coming where that obedience will cost you something dearly, says the Lord. You'll reevaluate things in your life. You'll reevaluate prices that you've paid for ground that you've gained in the past season. And yet in the next season, it will be a deeper price. And look and see. And even as the expanse of the territory is laid before you this weekend, new doors, new gates, new portals. But I'm even... Even within you, the Lord says, narrow it down to that one place, that one word, that one prophetic revelation that you have grabbed hold of, and yet you look for another thing. The Lord says, heed that which I give you. For some of you, it will be territory in your homes. Some of you will be territory of the church. Some of you will be territory for your business. Some of you will be territory for future generations. Some of you will be territory in intercessory watchmanship. The Lord says, grab hold of that territory. Pay the price. Do not let it go. The expanse will be a great reward for you. But heed that one thing. Grab hold of that one thing that I'm releasing to you individually this weekend. Victory is in the obedience, says the Lord. And it's the willingness to pay the price. Count the cost. So many of you are willing. And then you, you cannot even perceive at times things before you say, it's the enemy. Or, or it's my own soul. And the Lord says, it's my hand. I cause all things as you have sacrificed yourself to me. I am the initiator. I am the finisher. So look unto me for that one thing, that one territory. Heed it, hear it, and obey it, says the Lord. I'm unlocking the door I have sent forth out of the temple of 
the north, my angel of mystery, revealer of mystery. I'm going to open up doors and rooms and chambers inside of you that's never been explored. Get ready because I am the door and I'm going to open up my heart. I'm going to show you another part that you've never known before as you sit behind heaven's door. The revealer of mysteries is in the house. Get ready, every man and spouse, every person in this place. I'm going to pour out the revelation of my heavenly love and grace. I'm unveiling mysteries. Do you hear the sound? Do you hear it all around? The floodgates have been cracked open. I've heard your cry. I've heard the spirit of desperation. It's been like a fragrance. It's been a sweet aroma to my nostrils. In the heavens, I've heard every whisper of your heart. I know every detail. I've seen every fault, every failure, every victory. Come on up higher. Get from underneath the guilt and shame and condemnation. Let me show you my love. Let me show you my mercy. Let me show you my grace. Let me show you my blood. I want you to come up higher. I want to show you my eyes of fire. I want to show you my colors of desire. I want you to hear the sounds of heaven that's going to resonate within you. It'll rearrange and change. It'll shift everything inside of you. Even upon this house, the door is being opened. The angel has put his key in the locks of your heart. And now the chambers and the rooms are, are available. You have access access to come up higher you can now see you can now hear the barriers and veils are being removed you have positioned yourself won't you come and sit at my feet won't you let me speak into your ear won't you let me embrace you won't you come and feel my embrace as we dance on a crystal light sea of glass on the dance floor i want to hold you oh bride Oh, it's all about a wedding. You are my bride. It's all about a wedding. You are my bride. Oh, my love for you I could not hide. I want you to come on into this place, this secret place, the most holy place, this place that I want to embrace and reveal the beauty of my face. One look at me, one glimpse of me. You'll never be the same. It's the power in my name. You think you know who I am, but you really don't know. Oh, who I really am, says the Lord. You can tell others all about me, but do you really know who I am? What do I smell like? What do I taste like? What do I feel like? What do I look like? For the Lord says I'm ready to roar, ready to roar over you as a roaring lion of the tribe of Judah. You're going to hear like you've never heard before. You're going to see like you've never seen before. This weekend is a time of impartation, of revelation, and destination. It's a place that you've never walked before. Other things have been good in the past, but now the best is yet to come. Now I begin by the whirlwind of fire to catch you up higher, even changing your desire. Come on down by the river. Come on down to this place called heaven that's inside of you. That's just another part, a vapor, a mist of heaven's inside of you. I want you to come on and let me unveil a revelation that's inside of you. Oh, I'm going to get you up. I'm going to transport you. I'm going to translate you. I'm going to bring you into realms you've never been before, realms of glory dimensions far beyond your comprehensions. Get ready, oh church. You're my bride. You're my bride. You're the one I I lived and died for. You're the one I shed my blood for. I'm in love with you and I want all of you. I want your time. My name is Jealous. I'll settle for nothing less. I want your very best. 
fall in love with me for I'm ready to open up heaven's mystery. The fragrance of heaven is going to fill the atmosphere of your soul and your spirit and your families. Get ready, husbands, those that have been running from me, those that have been living in sin and wickedness, my love will overshadow them. Get ready, family, sons and daughters and wives. I'm getting ready to put back together that which has been dismantled by the enemy. For I've got an angel of wealth, an angel of healing, an angel of finance, an angel of revelation. I've got angels all over this place. They're working on your behalf. Come on, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, and live in that realm of the unseen. Live in that realm of what I've called you to. Get familiar from the realm that you came from. Come on back to the Garden of Eden. Come on back, come on back, come on back to the place that I want you to live in. It's now time, this weekend, it's now for Heaven's Encounters to be a part of your life. Go, 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 and run with the vision that I placed within you. Now, now, now is a release, a release. A release, a release, a release of revelation of mysteries. Help us to inhale and comprehend and to believe the fervent love that you have for us through these words. Help us to just put on these words tonight, Lord. Help us, Lord, to not just say, well, there was another prophet releasing a word. But, Lord, help us to say, Yes, and amen. Help us to write it. Help us to live it. Help us, Lord. Holy Spirit, tattoo those words to our heart. Tattoo them to our tongue. Tattoo those to our eyes. That all we would see is the prophetic revelation leading to yes and amen. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Could you just give the Lord just a praise and however you want to do that tonight. Praise Him. Praise Him. Lord, thank you for your blessings over this house and over this people tonight. Wow, thank you, Lord. Man, there is such a powerful presence of the Lord. <laughs> Man, wow. Can I just release a wow anointing over you? Like, wow. Just wow yourselves. Wow. Come on, I just release a wow anointing over you tonight. <laughs> Man, there is nothing better, first of all, than being in the presence of the Lord. But there's really nothing better than being in the house with lions that love the kingdom of heaven. Woo! How many lions? Are there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just God saying, see, I could have did that earlier tonight, but I just want to let you know I'm still in control. How many lions in the house tonight and lionesses? You know, every time I get together with a whole pride of lions and lionesses, I love to hear a roar. Can I just ask everybody to stand to their feet before we invite our guest up tonight? Because I want to give her this microphone so hot, so anointed, this atmosphere so ridiculously overcharged that all she has to do is just stand here. You know what the word revelation means? 
the illumination of things not seen. Yeah. So you're going to see things this weekend. You're going to say things this weekend that are, not com that are not common to your vocabulary. Yeah. How many of you want to see your vocabulary change this weekend? I know this. I do. I want you to do this, lions and lionesses. On the count of three, I want to just release a Holy Ghost roar. I got a Tony. Can you come up here, Tony? Tony is my, he's my lion roar, man. How many of you, come on, Tony, come up here. Pastor Tony. Pastor Tony, come on up here. This Tony is like Tony the Tiger. He really is. And I want you to just do this. Would you lead us in a Holy Ghost roar tonight, Pastor, if you would, on the count of three? Pray hard now for Jesus to come and, and to do the roaring because we can't, when compared with him, we can't roar. I once had a vision of him roaring and um, I'm loath to do this now. But anyway, on the count of three, let's give it our best roar and pray that Jesus will roar over the top of us. Are you ready? One, two, three. Three, roar! 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 <laughs> wow, thank you. Thank you, Lord Tony. Man, you know what happens? You know why I like to roar? Because if you were anyone looking to attack and you heard this many lions in one house, you would be leaving the city quickly. So we just roar over the city and over the state of North Carolina, and we just let the enemy know that the Lion of Judah is ready. Amen. Come on, you are a mighty, mighty people gathered f for this night for a specific purpose. Wow, so many of you in here. I haven't seen you in a while. God bless you guys. Um, we're going to do this tonight before we get started because I don't even know what's going to happen this weekend. You know, one thing about this house that's pretty low maintenance, we're like, just show up and then we'll figure it out. It's always better that way when the Holy Spirit does it. Amen. How many of you prefer that? And those, and let me just first say this too, those that are watching tonight online, live web stream, we just bless you guys. We same that, send the same roar anointing over you tonight, and we're just honored that you guys are tuning in tonight and joining us. You're going to be blessed, so just hang in there um, and roar right in your own living rooms or wherever you are tonight, that same anointing in Jesus' name, amen. For those that are, that are sitting in here, would you just bless those that are watching tonight? Come on, just give them a little clap. People watching from as far as Nicaragua and all different places tonight. So we just welcome you to this conference too, up and down the East Coast and all through the country. Um, we're going to get ready to do this tonight because there is no registration fees or anything. Um, we are going to take up an offering tonight before we start because you might not like Kat. So <laughs> just in case you don't like her, okay? Um, I doubt it. But just in case, we are going to receive an offering. And one thing that this house does, I know our house does this. If you're a visitor, we are so thankful. How many of you have never been here before? Could I see your hand? Wow. Okay. One, two, three. Four. A lot of you have never been here before. Hopefully you've been blessed and it's been a good experience for you. You know, we're just kind of laying the foundation tonight. Tomorrow morning at 930, we'll open up again 2 p.m. in the afternoon tomorrow. And then we'll go be going at 6.30 tomorrow night. And then 10 a.m. Sunday morning. So by 10 a.m., you're not going to be able to walk into the parking lot without falling on the ground and just getting drunk in the Holy Ghost out there. So we have ushers on Sunday morning that just started carrying people in on stretchers. So just don't worry about it. If you get here and you just fall out in the parking lot, just lay there. Somebody will come and get you. It's okay. The police already know us. They just drive by. They used to call the ambulances, but they don't do that anymore. Here's what I want to say about this house and about our visitors that are here today. This house is really a house of honor. And I believe that we honor not only each other and the gifting and the call that's on our lives in this house, 
But we honor when the Lord always brings in guests into this house because for us, we don't do these conferences because we want to say we did conferences. We've ha we have a mandate. If you're a visitor and don't know this house, there is a mandate on this house to be a gateway church into the region. We were doing a live show on Wednesday night up in Martinsville, thanks to uh, Todd, uh, excuse me, Chad and Melody. Um, we were up there in their place, and they were doing a live show for this conference. And we were talking about the purpose of gateway and region and kingdom. And we do this because we have a mandate to supply the kingdom with everything that it needs, according to what the Lord calls whatever that is for. We're not some show-offs that say do that. It's just that the Lord said, can I find a place that has no breaks? Can I find a place where I can just do what I want to do until I'm done and they won't freak out on me? And so we just really feel like this is the place where the Lord can just rest in there. Hey, Pastor Randy, I see you back there. Good to see you tonight, bro. Uh, we just feel like this is a place where the Lord can really just rest and can also just release it. You know, it's that Ezekiel 47 anointing. The scripture says, it, where does it start? The overflow, it starts in the house and then it goes out the doors. And it becomes ankle high, knee high. It goes into the rivers and out to the ocean and it heals the nations and the land. So in our just silly little belief, in the silly little faith that we have in this place, we really believe that on weekends like this and every time we gather, that we are healing the nation. Do you know that there is healing in the nation when you are releasing this glory so as you worship the lord you are not only just being edified yourself but you're releasing something into the region that is healing them so i believe after even a night like tonight the city is rejoicing and they don't know why less people are getting high and drunk less people are involved in addiction and prostitution and we have a lot of that around here and we have a lot less than we used to have and we're getting ready um, to get our party bus on the road here because next, yeah, yeah, some of you that, our evangelistic teams in this church are real happy about that. We're getting ready to hit the streets with our evangelistic party bus and uh, we'll just rock neighborhoods every Friday night and weekends wherever we go with that thing in the area here. So I want to just ask you to do this, okay? There's 40 ministries in this church. Not one penny of what we receive this entire weekend goes into this house. This goes to bless our guests for coming here. I'm humbled and honored when God sends generals into this house. I really, really am honored. This is just Little High Point, North Carolina, but it is the high point. And we believe that everything flows down from here. So can I ask you to do this tonight? Maybe you thought I wasn't going to sow anything or maybe just give a little bit. Could you just say, God, I want to be obedient to whatever that is. You are blessing these generals tonight. And I don't want to go through the whole Matthew 10, 10 thing, you know, bless a prophet and you receive a prophet's reward. Bless a righteous person, you reach, receive a righteous person's reward. But you do. That's the great thing about it. You cannot mess up God's word. So, how many of you think you know what you're supposed to give tonight? One person, two people. We better start worshiping again. Come on, we were just releasing revelation. All right, we'll let you figure that out with the Lord tonight. Um, I want to do this. I had somebody in mind that I was going to ask to pray. Hey, where's Abner? Oh, there you are right there. Abner, you look like you're a little plastered. Are you okay? All right. Could you just pray over this tonight for me, brother? Come on up. How many of you know Abner Suarez? Amazing prophet of the Lord here tonight, too. And many, how many of you in ministry that put your hands up, pastors and other that are in full time ministry around here? Yeah, look around. Thank you, guys. I want to just honor you for coming and being here tonight. Would you just kind of bless this? Yeah. Where's the Lord take it? Yeah. Are they going to collect it? <laughs> I don't know. They're waiting for you. I think they should. I think I like it when people bring it up because then they, that's fun. Can we do that? All right. Probably shouldn't. I probably should ask you before I had the mic, right? Yeah. You know, uh, in the Old Testament, they used to come as a family and bring their offering before the Lord. And one of the things that they would do is they would remind God about what He promised about finances. 
And when you give tonight, it's just as much worship of what we just did for the last hour and a half. And I just love to give, and I do remind God of what he said about giving, and that everything that we get is just an overflow of that. So if it's cool with the, well, we've decided already. Um, if the officers just come up and just lay them up here. And I encourage you, whatever you're asking God for breakthrough tonight, just put a demand on that as you come up. It, it's not the amount, it's the amount that God told you to give. And when you're faithful to do that, remind God. And if... What? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> they don't have a time limit, so don't worry. <laughs> So just stand, and Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bless your people with overflow. I bless them to prosper and be in health. I call for, I felt like just a second ago, there's like 50 to 60% of you that need a real financial breakthrough. And some of you in the next three months, finances are going to come to you that you've never even thought would be possible. Some of you are going to uh, go supernaturally out of debt. Some of you are going to start getting checks in the mail. You've never gotten checks in the mail. Some of you, uh, there's three people in here, promotions coming on your job. And so we just release blessing and increase. And we declare that lack is not a part of anyone's life or vocabulary in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Hallelujah. It is so good to be home with family. So glad y'all are here. I am so excited that God has sent Kat Kerr and her team to this house. I can hardly talk. I'm so excited. And um, I met Kat through Sean and Virginia that were just here, you know, for the Sounds and Wonders meeting. And uh, we met through a bookstore, and I've had the privilege of getting to know Kat, her husband, and her family, her sisters, Margaret Voorhees, different ones. And I've got to minister with her a couple, three times at Heaven's Invitation, and that's what she does. And we're going to do one in two months in Jacksonville, Florida. But I want to say this. I've been to heaven. Now, I'm, t I'm, not, I'm talking about I've been to heaven. And it's totally, before I ever went to heaven, I was a total Holy Ghost glory wreck. But when I met Kat Kerr, and I listened to her talk to heaven, so we've been at her house, sitting at her table, several of us, till 2.30 in the morning, just listening to her story after story, encounter after encounter, revelation after revelation. I'm in kindergarten compared to her in the revelation of the things of heaven that she can share. And I just want to say what an honor, what a privilege that Father God has sent her our way. And we are just so blessed. So y'all get ready. There's a lot I could say about her, so we got more time. And this is the lady with pink hair you've heard me talk about for the last three and four years. Lynn and I would go out and eat with her and her husband. We call him Captain. And we would, we would walk in the door, and I'd just look at the waitress, hostess, and I'd say, I'm looking for the lady with the pink hair. Oh, yeah. So we sit down. And the waiter or waitress that comes to the table totally ignores Lynn and me and Captain and always looking at her. Kat has won more people to Jesus in the last few years of her life with pink hair than all the previous years of her life because God told her, she can tell you about it, God told her to dye her hair pink. And when God tells you to do something, no matter how foolish it looks or sounds, you need to do it because it's all about advancing His kingdom. So I just want to say... Father, thank you for sending the impartation of heaven's revelation and encounter. Come on, Kat. Come on. Oh, we just love her. She is family. She is family. You just obey God.
Holy. Is this on? Holy! We sound so like little kids saying that compared to heaven. <laughs> but it still gets Daddy excited. He loves it. You ever hear one of the living creatures say that? Ooh. There is a lot I have to share so much, like 15 years of nonstop going to heaven. So I want to get up here. <laughs> and I will remember to take a drink when nothing comes out. When I start speaking and nothing comes out, I'll turn around and take a drink. And I tell people, if you don't have the cap off, I'm not opening it. I'm not going to take the six seconds it takes to go over there and open that bottle because that's something else I could tell you. That's how uh, I have been prepared to share. And people go, well, you know, I don't stop till they drag me out. <laughs> and then people follow us sometimes. And I don't stop. They leave me in a restaurant or in the ladies' room or the parking lot. And if anybody comes by, I'm going to share. Because the Holy Spirit said, this is the way we made you. If they're there, you're going to share. And I share every day of my life, everywhere I go, because of the pink hair. Isn't that awesome? As some people just love everything I share, then they go, but why the pink hair? Who cares why? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Guess what? You can have pink hair in heaven. And some people just have this little idea and are in such a box. And when I'm done speaking, you'll, right now you may think you're not in a box. <laughs> I have no box. <laughs> My box was destroyed a long time ago. And I want to assure you that God is not in anybody's box. And he does not wear any man's tag. And heaven does not live by the world's guidelines. And they don't just take me to heaven and show me heaven. When the Lord walked in my home back in uh, um, 2005, after having taken me to heaven since 1996, never knew I'd write a book, never knew I'd be standing here sharing with you. I was really happy just on assignment. And uh, God would catch me up to heaven. You know, he does that. The devil is not going to catch you up to heaven. I will let you know many things, though, because... I am a seer, and guess what? The devil doesn't give you a seer anointing. I mean, it's shocking to me how many people think, you know, I don't want to hear if she's a seer. Ooh, that's weird. That's new age. I went, you know what? The seers were here before the new age movement was here. The devil did not create the spirit realm. The spirit realm does not belong to the enemy. God created it. He created the seers. He created the spirit realm. He, he created all the created beings. We are human beings. And the only other beings are created beings. There's no other race living on some other planet that God practiced on and then abandoned. I can tell you about the aliens, but I don't have time tonight. That's not on my list. And to be quite honest with you, after hearing many people speak, uh, most of the time when they think they're seeing one, they're seeing an angelic being. They do not all look like us. They don't. And people want to argue with me. You say they have wings, but they don't have wings. And I said, let's just agree on this. If one comes to help you and you're in a life and death situation and you think they shouldn't have wings and they show up with wings, would you please let them help you? <laughs> and that is the end of my discussion because I will not argue with people. I understand what Jesus meant when he was hanging on the cross and he said, forgive them. They don't know. We won't finish the rest of the sentence. They just don't know. And that's the honest truth. They're, they're, they have a fear that they're going to go into something that's wrong, that's not God. And you just better learn to receive different things from God, new things from God, because this whole world is headed in a direction and it's not going to turn around. Even in the secular world, it's going to get more radical, more extreme. 
The light will get greater than the darkness, by the way. One of my main messages is the greater glory that the Word talks about. And God talks about it. God does not talk about the doom and gloom, I'm sorry. You will not hear about doom and gloom from me. I have been before the throne so many times I lost count. And they are so excited in heaven of what they're about to do on this earth. And I, I may say during my message, no matter what I'm talking about, if the Holy Spirit says uh, news flash from heaven, <laughs> I will stop and tell you what it is. Because someone out there is thinking something and he's going to correct you instantly. Or encourage you instantly. Or agree with you instantly. Uh, one of my messages I have, um, I probably share a lot of that is called Accelerate. Because that's what we're doing. Uh, in case you didn't know, a fullness of time has come. And literally, you are not in the same realm or atmosphere that you were even three months ago. You're in another time zone uh, on this earth. And we're not waiting to cross the threshold. We've already crossed the threshold. And you know when you go into a really fine house, you cross the threshold, there's this little entrance room. Is that right? That's where we're at. And this is what God said. We are definitely in a, in a season on this earth of revelation, extreme revelation. These are extreme days. They are not the perilous times. These are not the perilous times. They are still to come. God has something He's going to do first, and it's in the Word. And I wish all those pastors that think you should sell everything, buy the sea rations, and hide in the hills, they need to go back and reword, reread the Word of God. Because all the scriptures the Father has given me revelation on are the ones they're not talking about. I would like to know who has done greater works than Jesus Christ has around the entire world until the world knows he's real. That hasn't happened. Is that true? I'm not talking about walking on water. I'm not talking about talking, uh, stopping a storm. I'm talking about going out there during an earthquake, stopping it and making it, put it back. Do you know there's a manifested son and daughter of God? Those are the things God has planned for this earth that you are now living in the time on this earth when those things were happening, okay? Who's been doing that? Who? We haven't had it yet. Because we are in that little entrance room. We've crossed the threshold. And God, for mercy, you know, he's been trying to wake up his body for some time. We're in that little entrance hall where there is a very short, and I mean short, period of preparation. Revelation, preparation, and all the rest of this season is demonstration. And you will demonstrate those greater works and miracles that Christ said that we would do. There's another scripture. This is only my introduction that lasts about 45 minutes, by the way. <laughs> if I keep track, sometimes I don't. Amen. And I'm just letting you know, I'm warning you, I go to bed at 5 a.m. My greatest time of activity is between midnight and 4 a.m. That's why God uses me. I can outlast any young person. <laughs> and I'm 60. And I don't mind telling you that. I don't mind. I feel more energetic and alive now than when I was 20 because I'm beginning to adapt to heaven's lifestyle. And when you die and go to heaven, you don't look 33. Everybody thinks, oh, you know, they all have their little ideas. We're going to erase all those ideas you've always carried with you. We're going to wipe them out, blow up your box, and you will never be the same again. 
And God, uh, in my introduction, he likes to say several things that will take you out of your box and you will destroy it. And it will be about you, him, heaven, and eternity. And there is a reason why he has given extreme revelation. Because you have to know who you are. And people said, why didn't he do this before? Well, he was leaking it out here and there. But it wasn't the time. You know, even Daniel was asked, you know, to seal up some things that weren't for that time. Let me tell you, if he'd have shared some of the things he saw up there, I was shown ahead of time, he'd have died a lot earlier. <laughs> Why do you think they had to keep John the Baptist out in the wilderness? He was giving one of the most bizarre, extreme revelations ever given. You can imagine the high priest, when it leaked back to them, what are you talking about? Repent of your sins and get baptized in water. What does that mean? That is nothing. Was that a message God gave? And yet a lot of people thought, this is weird. This can't be, our, that can't be father. and That can't be father. We have to go to the temple, make animal sacrifice, that's the only way you can be forgiven. And yet that is not what the message was that God gave John the Baptist. And by the way, he had camel hair. That's why I got pink hair. I thank God every day he didn't make me wear camel hair. And in case you didn't know, he had to wear it inside out. Anybody ever pet a camel? It's like a short-haired porcupine. So he was definitely strange in his day. He was bringing a word and a revelation that had never been given before because God was about to do something new in the earth. And that's what I am. I, ha I operate in the prophetic for probably close to 40 years now, but I don't even call myself that. He calls me a revelator. Because now my position has been changed. And I am made to reveal. And you want that revelation. Amen. You've been crying out for it. Even tonight you were crying out for it. And he said, my people have been crying out for it. And all I'm doing is answering them. Uh, they just didn't know it would come with pink hair. <laughs> Amen. And by the way, this is going to be just something that's coming. One day you'll walk into church and half the people will have all different colors of hair. The Holy Ghost told me about 10 years ago, I'm going to take what's on the inside of my wild uh, body down there. He said, I'm going I'm to take what's on the inside and put it on the outside. I warned my own pastor and his wife, he's going to throw the suits out the door. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, yeah, he's going to get rid of them. You wait and see. Probably even get rid of the pulpit. Oh, I don't know about that. I said, you just wait and see. I said, first he's going to start wearing wild colors of suits. And then he's going to get rid of them. And guess what? He got rid of them. He got rid of them. Amen? They don't wear suits in heaven, people. I never saw one suit on anybody in all my thousands of trips to heaven. Now, they do have amazing garments that look like kings and queens wear. You actually do get a wardrobe. You can't ride a roller coaster in a gown. Amen. There is a reason why the Father said you must be like little to enter into the kingdom of. And people go, well, it's going to be a holy place. That's right. It's holy. And it's fun. And if you want a, a, a two-word description of heaven, holy fun. That's it right there. People go, oh, no, it's going to be holy. It's going to be like living in a convent or a monastery. I went, okay, let's think about this just literally. Let's take a group of kids and set them free in the monastery in the convent. How long do you think they're going to let them stay there? Because kids are kids, no matter where they are. And they wouldn't be walking around like this. They would be running, jumping, laughing, playing, probably climbing on things, jumping off things. Because they're kids. 
And the reason he said you have to be like little kids is when you get to heaven, guess what? You cannot get any holier. There's no classes called Holiness 101. The blood of Christ took care of that. Amen? So you got to do something. What are you going to do? You are going to have fun. With your daddy, with your families, with your friends, with all the disciples, all the men and women of God, all those who've departed and moved to heaven. By the way, they're not lost. They're not lost. Nobody lost them. I know you say you lost somebody. No, you didn't. <laughs> they're not up there with a the search party looking for them in heaven. They knew the very second they would come home. No one in heaven is surprised. Not even their loved ones who were waiting on them knew that they were coming. And I can even tell you how that happens. Amen? So right now we're in that little entrance room to get prepared to manifest the glory, the power, the passion and purpose of God in this earth like no other believers have before. If you want to know, you want a word for your life, that's the word. And don't ask me to give personal prophecy. He forbids it. We would be here for four days. <laughs> Seriously. And he doesn't let me do it anymore. He said, you are given a word, a corporate word to the corporate body about what I have planned for them in this time on the earth. Anybody here will want that word. Because that's why you were born during this time. No one here is a mistake. I don't care how your birth took place. Nobody is here by, by mistake. You're here by divine design. He knew you before he sent you here. I'm even going to share at one point the mystery of life. Where you came from before you were sent to earth. If I have time, I can share what the original creation looked like. That would be Genesis 1-1. One, one. And then in another fullness of time, that would be 1-2. Millions of years between. You get to find all this out when you get to heaven. You have so many mysteries revealed to you. You get to heaven. Let me tell you, you won't be bored. You find out so many things. Your family and friends who live there don't even realize how long they've been there. And, and this is the point. It doesn't matter how they died. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. They don't care. They don't care how they died. They're so happy they're there, they wouldn't want to come back. They're living in an amazing, supernatural, adventurous place. That God made, and I love the word, and don't try to debate the word with me. I was raised on it like baby food from the time I was a little kid. My dad fed us the word of God, taught us how to pray. He had uh, divine encounters in his life. I walk on a foundation of holiness. No! Darkness is allowed in this building this night. No! Darkness outside this building. In Jesus' name, his will shall be done this night. I will not allow the enemy to bring confusion in any way, in any mind or heart in this place. Because darkness does not dwell in me. I have no darkness in me. I do not pursue the things of the enemy. I flee the very appearance of evil. I despise evil. And that's what we're all supposed to do. The body needs to realize you can't live by the world's guidelines. Now, I'm not saying you won't go to heaven. I'm just going to say you're not going to have very much to show for your life down here. And you can't escape that Christ did ask us to do certain things with our life. We're supposed to be the face of heaven for this earth. We're supposed to look like it, sound like it, act like it, live like it. And to those people want to know him. So you're going to learn a lot. He's opened my eyes to the spirit realm. I know exactly how the enemy operates in your lives. How he marks people, hunts people. Gets them pulled into stuff. I can tell you how to avoid all that. I can tell you what happens in the spirit realm. When you do the wrong thing and when you do the God thing. 
I can tell you what happens. Everything you do in your life causes a reaction or a response in the spirit realm, the unseen realm. There's not just uh, unseen beings around this world. There's, not, there's only the light and the darkness, the demonic and, and the angelic. No other beings out there. <laughs> but I will tell you that they don't just come here and walk around you. They actually have spiritual buildings built on this earth. How many people remember when Jesus was taken to the mount where he was tempted? Remember that? And what Satan said to him, look at my kingdoms. They were real. He had palaces built. He had beautiful things in there, all spiritual things, but very real. So when he showed him, this is mine, and he got it because permission from people, you know, to take your territory, your stuff your life, they gave him permission. I've got so many titles and messages here, the Holy Ghost has to tell me what to speak about. I will tell you that God said he's about to create through his believers' mouths, not necessarily what they'll say, but what they won't say. Because what you say gives permission to the prince and power of the air to come and take your air. And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create no-fly zones. Do you know what a no, who knows what a no-fly zone is? You go over another country without permission to pass through there, and you get shot down. Because you don't have the authority to be there. You didn't have permission to be there. And the believers, many of them in their own homes, in their cities, will create no-fly zones by the, by the stuff they're not saying with their mouth that gives the enemy permission, we will actually suck air and atmosphere away from the enemy. Say amen. Because you don't want him to have permission to be in your place, do you? We've been giving him permission. And actually that's a lot of the problems and issues we have in our lives are we're literally giving him permission. Because when he, we, we speak his words... You gave him permission to come in and take your air and your atmosphere. When you speak God's words, you release a river of life out of your belly will flow rivers of. Out of God flows a river of. You see how you're made in his image? There are so many things in the word where you are made like God. And he said that himself. So the body, the reason God is releasing detailed extreme revelation is so you will actually know who you are as a son or daughter of the most high God. And you know what? We should live like Jesus. He didn't tolerate anything in his life. He didn't tolerate evil, certainly not. He didn't tolerate darkness. He didn't tolerate uh, uh, disbelief or unbelief. He didn't, he didn't tolerate a lot of things. He wasn't moved by anything. And this is what God said, it's about time the body stands up and stop being moved and start moving things. Because he didn't give dominion to the enemy, he gave it to us. We have power over all the power of the enemy. And the only thing that changes that is if by your actions, your words... You literally walk into the enemy's camp and say, here's some ammunition, come and get us. Isn't that surprising? See, when heaven sends a representative, you don't just get the icing. You got to have the meat. Or you won't change. And this is definitely a season for change. Everybody is in transition right now. And the direction you go in during the transition is totally up to you. So God is not just exposing the darkness in the earth. All things will be shaken. All things will be exposed. He is revealing himself, his home, which will be your temporary home for a while. Amen. His plans for this earth. One of the messages I have is called God's report. Not the president's. <laughs> not the right. Not the left. Not the United Nations, but God's report from heaven that you are entering into the days of greater glory. 
And he likes to remind his people the word says this, and the last days, the, the darkness will.